Welcome, everybody, to the Friar Talk podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the bullpen, and we're going to be projecting who we have there. But before we get into that, I want to say we're also going to have a lineup kind of projection before opening day. Also, if you're a subscriber, if you listen to this channel a lot, make sure to tune in at 12.30 to 1 on Thursday, right before opening day. Uh, and we're just going to be having a quick live stream. We haven't done that yet, so make sure to, to join that. Uh, it'll be interesting. I don't know how it's going to be. Uh, we'll all three be there. And it'll be fun. Uh, so moving on to the bullpen stuff, I want to go over some injuries just real quick. The guys that have been sent to the IL, Austin Adams, Dan Altavia, Pierce Johnson, Matt Strom, Javi Guerra, uh, Denilson Lamette will be, and then also, also Austin Nola and Trent Grisham are on the IL. So those are all the guys. As far as it af- how it affects the bullpen, I think Austin Adams, Pierce Johnson, and Matt, Matt Strom would all make the opening day roster. However, they're not going to be with them to start the season. So with that said, I think the Padres have six locks in the bullpen. And I think these guys are Drew Pomeranz, Mark Melanson, Keone Kella, Angel Pagan, Ryan Weathers, and Tim Hill. I think one of the guys that doesn't really get mentioned as much as the other guys is probably Tim Hill. I think Tim Hill's... I mean, last year, some there'd be times where I'm like, oh, man, why is Tim Hill coming out? And he'd prove me wrong. Like, he's actually a really solid pitcher. You know, he's a lefty who throws, kind of has a different arm angle. Um, I don't know all his pitches, but he's actually really solid out of the bullpen. But those other guys are absolutely locked. You know, Pagan struggled at the beginning of the season last year. He settled down, held it down towards the latter half of the season. Drew Pomeranz, it seemed like Drew never allowed a hit. So, you know, obviously that guy, he's hands down. Probably He's probably our best player out of the bullpen who are the other ones so the six guys i think that are locks are drew pomeranz mark melanson he's obviously a lot o- oh. older uh keone kella who, who had a really good spring training right. angel pagan obviously he was traded here to be a setup guy i don't i don't know what his role is going to be exactly but right. definitely like i think those are the four are right, those are our four like seven eight nine guys pretty consistently and then Ryan Weathers, who just got added to the roster. And then, of course, Tim Hill, who you said. I, I like your kind of your analysis of Tim Hill because at first, like, you don't really know him. He's a left-handed specialist, but he kind of earned a little bit larger of a role last season. And he's a solid arm. I, I like him a lot. Yeah, definitely. I really like Tim Hill. And then regarding the other guys, you know, we lost Rosie and we lost Yates. And then we picked up Melanson and Keller for cheaper. So those are two big additions. I'm not exactly a huge Melanson fan, but I do like Keone Keller. I think he's going to be a great either setup or closer. And then Ryan Weathers. I mean, I, I think all of us are excited for Ryan Weathers. I'm very excited to see how he does. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think Keone Keller is going to be like your 1A, 1B guys. Like if you guys have righties coming up again in the bottom of the ninth, we go Keller. We got some lefties going in, we got Palm. You know, then either one can play eight or can pitch eight. Uh, Pagan's always going to be that seven, eight guy. You know, he's used to the high leverage situations. We can use him at any time if we needed him, even earlier now because we have so much depth. It does suck the injuries that we have, but it's better now than it is later in season because our bullpen's only going to get stronger. Uh, I'm interested to see how they're going to use Weathers. I think Morihone won that fifth spot, so I think Weathers is stuck in the bullpen, unfortunately. But we saw what he did in the... Dodgers series in the playoffs he came out and he looked really good so wondering if they're just going to use him in like the fifth six innings when we need him there or if he's going to get thrown into some high leverage situations so do you think he will be a starter like down the road because I think he's going to be maybe they use him and we talked about this before but maybe they even use him as an opener sometimes like early on in the year where he comes out pitches trainings and then they do like a bullpen day um, and we've talked a lot about, like, should they have a six-man rotation or not? It's it's really interesting. A lot of that's also going to depend on if McKenzie Gore makes the roster. Because I think if I think if McKenzie Gore makes the roster, he's definitely ahead of Ryan Weathers on being that six starter in the rotation if they do go with six. But if not, I, I think that Ryan Weathers is a guy that – I think they're going to use him like a bullpen piece. And I, I think it's kind of odd. I don't know. Isaac, do you think, like – do you think it's smart to use a young guy like that in one inning situations? Well, for in terms of Ryan Weathers, who you know we all probably expected to be a starter, I would hope that he could go at least two innings. Maybe not all the time, but you know if he can go the five and the six, 
after Mackenzie Gore goes the first four, I think that's perfect. That's, was it Weathers and Gore that we talked about for like a kind of like a duo kind of thing? That, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that'd be perfect. You know, those two can go like six or seven innings. I think that's great. I think you're right. I definitely think Mackenzie Gore is ahead of Ryan Weathers just because, well, obviously Mackenzie Gore is probably going to end up being the better player. Weathers is probably more pro ready, but we got to give Mackenzie Gore chances to get more innings in the bigs, especially early on in the season where our schedule is pretty weak. But yeah, that's that's my opinion on that. Do you guys think Mackenzie Gore is going to make the roster? Because I've been seeing a lot of stuff. And I know this is a little bit off topic. It, it kind of pertains to the bullpen. But I think if he makes the roster, he's a starter. I don't know if he's going to make the roster, though. Yeah, I don't. Uh, it's not likely to me. So if he does make the roster, he's definitely going to be a starter. I think we saw, I think it was yesterday, that when he came out of the bullpen, he struggled in spring training because it's so unfamiliar to him. So I think that he's going to be exclusively a starter. So if he does make the roster, then it even for sure that Weathers is in the bullpen even more. Like he may be able to go those multiple inning stints, but I think it's important to get both of them the innings that they need. Yeah, I, I think I think that we're going to see Weathers in the bullpen for sure. Um, I think it's just interesting what his role will be. Is he going to be a guy that they only pitch one inning, or is he going to come out sometimes and if he looks good, are they going to pitch him two or three? And I think. I think the reason it's such a big question is because a lot of times last year, especially with Morahone, he'd come in and he'd look great and he'd only pitch for one inning. And, and we also, we saw that with Weathers too in the playoffs, but that's where like, I don't know what's, I don't know what's good to develop Weathers. Like what's the right, right way to do it, I guess, because I think that you want to see him in, in longer opportunities. And I just don't know if that's going to be the case. They might use him. Oh yeah. He's a, he'll come in a lot of times in the sixth or seventh inning or the fifth or sixth inning but only pitch one inning. I, I don't know. I just have some concerns about that just because we've seen some guys where they change their role up so much and some guys are totally adaptable to it, but it's not, it's not for every guy. I mean, so I don't know. I'm interested about that, but I do think he's, I think he's definitely going to be a bullpen piece. I just don't know exactly what his role will be. Um, but besides those top six that we just mentioned, I, I think that there's going to be nine spots in the, in the bullpen. So who are some guys that you think are going to make it outside of these top six? I think you can go first. It's kind of tough to say. I mean, I hate to say it, Craig Stammen. It's probably a for sure thing. Um, and, and I do hate him, but he has had times where he does succeed, like in that wild card game where nobody expected him to start, but he succeeded in that situation. So although it's worst case scenario, we probably will end up seeing Craig Stammen um, but some other guys that might be able to compete for it, uh, Taylor Williams. We know that Austin Adams is going to start on the I.L. <laughs> That's it. I don't really know the other guys too much. So I think Chris Matt's a lock. He had under a one ERA in the spring. Uh, I think Williams. Uh, Reese Neer, uh, probably a lot of guys you haven't heard of. He's on our prospect video if you want to check him out. He had like a 2-1-6 ERA this spring. No, it's only through like eight or nine innings, but we could really use the just depth in there. Maybe get some younger guys some innings. If he turns out to be like a really solid arm, we might be able to get rid of Craig Stammen sooner or later. So those are two of the guys, so that leaves one extra. I think Nabil Chris Matt has definitely earned a spot. And I think, unfortunately, like you said, Isaac, I think Craig Stammen also earned a spot. Uh, and also, like it just makes sense. Like he's been under contract. He's had he's pitched a lot of big league innings, and especially early on, I think that does matter a lot more. Just with all of these injuries that the Padres have, I'll also say, whoever makes the opening day roster, by no means has a spot even 15 days after the season starts, because Austin Adams, Pierce Johnson, and Matt Strom, I would expect all three of those guys to be in the Padres bullpen when they get healthy. And that could take a while. That might only take a couple weeks for some of them. But those three guys, I think, will replace, I think, these last three guys, unless, you know, maybe Ryan Weathers isn't quite ready for it. And I hope he is. I, I want to watch him. But maybe he's not ready to, like, really ready to pitch a lot of big league innings and be in some high leverage situations. And so Pierce Johnson takes his spot, right? Just an example. But I think... Outside of those top six guys, I think the three that are most likely to make it, I think Nabil, Chris Matt, Craig, Craig Stammen are definitely going to make it. I think the final spot 
is going to be between Reese Nair, Taylor Williams, and I do think Mackenzie Gore is there. And we talked about him as a starter. I'm just kind of including him here because I don't know what his role would be. So maybe I just consider him as an extra guy on the in the rotation or the bullpen. Like he's kind of like half and half, I guess, just because they would need to have six starters if he was going to start. And we don't know if they're going to do that. So I think those are the three guys. I think that Reese Nair probably wins that one. Just because, like you said, he had eight innings. I think it was 8.1 innings pitched and a 2-2 two, two ERA, was it? it? It was really near two. It's like between two and 2.2. 2. It's minimal. Yeah, so he he's pitched really well. He's probably had the most time. Only 24 years old, right-handed pitcher. We got a lot of lefties in the pen. So that's who I think gets the final spot. So for me, Drew Pomeranz, Mark Melanson, Keone Kella, Emilio Pagan, Ryan Weathers, Tim Hill, Nabil Chrismat, Craig Stammen, and Reese Neer are my nine guys to make the pen. But anything else you guys want to add before we take off here? Uh, I mean, that sounds about right. Obviously, you know, when some of these guys come back, uh, Austin Adams is filthy. Matt Strom gave a lot of hate to Matt Strom at the, at the beginning of the season last year, but he came around, ended up having a pretty solid season. And then, oh, Pierce Johnson. You know, we've all hyped up Pierce Johnson a lot, especially Chase. Chase loves Pierce Johnson. And me and Matt ended up loving Pierce Johnson as as, uh, as the season went on because he was always a very solid pitcher. So when these guys come back, you know, the Padres are going to have such an amazing bullpen from one to nine. So since they got put on IL within the last week, uh, they can come back as early as April 8th. So, you know, they can take their time to either, you know, make sure they get back into the motions and everything, or we can have them back even sooner than we thought. So our bullpen is not going to be like lackluster throughout most of the season. We're going to have our guys back within the first two weeks of baseball, most likely. So it's nothing to worry about really. Yeah. And the opening day roster might not look as lethal as it will in a couple weeks too. Like you said, I mean, having no Austin Nola, no Trent Grisham in the lineup is obviously already a big deal, but there's three bullpen names that we mentioned that are, they're really good players. Pierce Johnson last year, he was, he, okay. He almost reminds me of being in the Nabil Chris Matt situation where it's like, Hey, there's a lot of hype around this guy. He's looked really good. And he slowly eases his way into a growing role. So maybe we see Chris Matt make that, that take those steps this year and become like a clear bullpen guy where he's in the roster. But I think the hope is that Craig Stammen is out of it. <laughs> like he's not there when it comes into like high le- like into, into important situations late in the season. And you'd much rather have a Matt Strong, Pierce Johnson, Austin Adams in there. So I think it's, it's really interesting that there's three guys that are probably going to be in the pen when it comes down, even like a month. So I, I like it. I mean, I think the penal, I think it's going to consistently improve as the year goes on. Um, if guys underperform, there's going to be other guys that are going to be able to come in and take their spots. So I think that's going to pretty much do it for today. Uh, we, we mentioned all these guys. The bullpen is going to look a lot different down the road, so I'm excited for that. But if this is your first time watching, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to check out our live stream on Thursday at 1230 Pacific time. And it'll be pretty casual, so just ask questions. You know, we'll just be answering questions in the chat and just talking about the Padres. So that'll be a lot of fun. But thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll talk to you guys soon.